Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start with a quick follow-up to the efile.com situation. The site has been fixed as of Tuesday morning. It still has no public notice or so warning users that they may have been redirected to malware in the past. I took the time today to take a closer look at one of the two malware samples that were delivered. Chrome users got update.exe and Firefox users got installer.exe. I took a look at update.exe. It's actually Python code. It uses a PyInstaller common framework in order to turn Python code into standalone executables, which uh, makes reverse analysis relatively easy. Pretty bulky piece of malware. It initially actually downloads the entire uh, PHP distribution and then has a brief PHP script that actually implements a backdoor and a command control channel that's pretty straightforward. It'll just pull a particular URL every 10 minutes, I believe it is. And then whenever there's a command coming back, it will execute that command. It can also uh, download files and that's pretty much all it does. But of course, being able to execute commands, being able to download and run code, well, that's really all that hacker needs to do to fully compromise a system. One little interesting quirk here, if you run the update script as a normal user, it'll actually complain and then ask you to run it as administrator in order to be better able to make itself persistent by adding itself as a scheduled job and on boot. Also looks like the malware is no longer available. So either the attacker or someone else has taken it down. Antivirus has been catching up today in actually adding signatures for this malware to their signature libraries. And just to point out that efile.com is just one of a number of different companies that's authorized to provide efile services. So efile.com being a compromised here doesn't mean that IRS efiling overall is compromised. It just affected this one site. And after spending a lot of time with supply chain attacks these last couple of podcasts, let's switch to our normal diet here of vulnerabilities and exploits. Well, Mandiant is warning that a number of older Veritas backup flaws are now being used in order to install a ransomware. Apparently, the Aleph ransomware crew is mostly behind this. Patches have been available for about two years now, so better get your Symantec slash Veritas backup exec up to date and make sure also that any of the default ports, 10,000, 9,000, 10,001, are not exposed to the outside. And Sophos patched three different vulnerabilities in its web appliance for 3.10.4. The three vulnerabilities, well, one is critical high and one is medium. The critical vulnerability does allow arbitrary remote code execution without authentication. So you should definitely quickly patch these appliances, uh, but the next thing you should do after you apply the patch is uh, talk to whoever approves purchases in your organization and tell them that uh, these appliances will be end of life in July. July 20th, 2023 is when they are going end of life. So there will be no patches after that. Sophos has other products with similar functionalities they'll recommend to you, uh, but uh, definitely uh, get ready for that and don't wait till the last minute. And that's sort of a good warning shot here that yes, there are vulnerabilities and you may be left on your own come August. In our web application security class, whenever I talk about cross-site scripting, I mentioned that one of the most difficult applications to code is a webmail system because you have to display the 
email, which is often HTML as part of the overall HTML and JavaScript of the webmail application, which often leads to confusion. So no surprise that we do have cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in webmail system, like for example, Simbra. And one of the relatively recent vulnerabilities here, CVE 2022-27926 is now being used in target attacks against some Simbra users. Apparently, in particular, uh, users associated with NATO are being targeted here. And the cross-site scripting vulnerability in particular is then being used in order to execute JavaScript inside the Simpra application, steal credentials, and well, cause other havoc. Good write up here from Proofpoint. Definitely, if you're using Simpra or any webmail application that you're running on premise, make sure that you keep them up to date. Like I said, cross site scripting vulnerabilities are somewhat common in these applications and can often be exploited because, well, people trust their email. And once an attacker has access to the email application, they often can elevate privileges from there. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. And if you like this podcast, then don't forget to tell your friends about it. And uh, thanks again and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.